means uh, building uh, received much more seismic load. Uh, this shows a comparison of two response spectrum observed in Sendari. Red one is observed at Sumitomo building, i.e. Sendari take, a lower level nearby main railway station, and blue one is Tohoku University Hill Zone. Unfortunately, because of site amplification and sympathetic vibration with building at 1.0 second, the building in Tohoku University was subjected to considerably large seismic input. Uh, the uh, severe structural damage of the building in Tohoku University and no structural damage of Sendai Mediatik can be explained by this figure. This figure is a response spectrum based on observed wave at Sumitomo building. From this figure, the seismic input uh, to send a media take is about 35 kine and 180 gal. So the, the seismic load input to send a media take was re relatively small and deformation caused by the earthquake remained confined to elastic response. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, damage control uh, type of design, as uh, I <coughs> said earlier, uh, don't have a, a chance to display its deliberate ability. A pin collection of clown button, some cracks are found in ceramic fireproofing protection. From now, I will speak on the ceiling fall on the seventh floor, which is the main interior damage. A plasterboard ceiling in the southern part of the seventh floor uh, fell down uh, by the main shock on 11 March. And then, after shock on 7 April, uh, brought down western part ceiling. In main shock, uh, eyewitness account and status of fallen ceiling suggest the ceiling fall begins <coughs> at areas between two, two and three. One of the uh, main reasons for ceiling fall is assumed to be a sympathetic violation with building. The connection of hanging above with steel floor has low fixation a degree, and this particular detail allows ceiling to uh, swing like a pendulum. The hanging bolt length of 50 centimeter leads to 1.4 uh, second natural period, which corresponds with uh, building natural period. Uh, this accordance, uh, called sympathetic vibration, uh, makes large and long time swing on ceilings. On some other floors, uh, though the same ceiling system with seventh floor is adopted, the difference of board lengths prevent sympathetic uh, vibration and then no damage occurs in ceiling. And, uh, at, uh, and that nobody was injured or killed was perhaps the only hopeful outcome uh, from this accident. The shelves and the desks protected people from being damaged. As an architect, Toyo Ito sent a message uh, to people associated with Sendere. When I was attending a competition of Sendai in 1995, a great Hanshin earthquake occurred. We put together a competition scheme, seeing miserable state of Hanshin. Since then, for more than five years, we undertook schematic design, detailed design, and construct, uh, construction phase with a memory of Hanshin. 
uh, both in design and in construction, we adopted a lot of new proposals and tried to take every possible means for safety against earthquake and fire. A structural design, Amusuru Sasaki proposed an energy absorbing system and basement, a tube structure composed of small steel pipes and steel plate sandwich slab. I believe they all worked well in this aspect. In spite of our maximum thoughtful consideration, damages of some interior materials, including saving of seventh floor, occurred. We got a fresh reminder of our lack of strength and learned a big lesson that there are pitfalls normally out or overlooked without doubt. And top of that, hearing nobody is injured and killed, I lightly feel, feel at peace. The Sendai is a unique project for me and Mr. Ito. I thank all the people associated with restoration of Mediatek and offer my prayers to all those who lost their lives in the Tofu Pacific and in its ensuing aftermath, as well as my sympathy to survivors and their families. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll like to move to the panel discussion and let me just quickly reintroduce everyone again. We'll have uh, Rafael Vignoli, uh, Leslie Robertson, Clifford uh, Prussian, um, and uh, Paul Katz, and uh, um, Sasaki-san is also, and Kurumano-san, please uh, take a seat. Thank you. I want to mention that uh, in addition to the exchange of uh, knowledge and uh, um, exchange of thought, uh, we uh, are here today to um, extend our, our uh, help in uh, financial help also, and for that reason, in the form of cash at your uh, chair, and we appreciate the uh, participation. I would like to, uh, the first question I would like to go through everybody, um, and this question kind of comes from my personal experience being in Japan. Um, obviously being Japanese and uh, ex living there, uh, earthquakes are internalized as, as Professor Kurumado explained. It is part of our lives in Japan and it's kind of internalized, but the one we felt on March 11th, it was extremely big. Even for somebody used to it, it was something different. Um, so my question for everybody is, where were you, and uh, when you heard about the earthquake, what went through your minds? So maybe we can start from uh, Raphael from then. Hmm. I can't remember where I was. I just remember that I was incredibly scared and uh, really legitimately concerned. I presume all of us have a, <clears throat> a kind of a, a surreal being. I mean, in, you know, I still can't believe that we can put these things together and make them stand, much less to go through a, through a, um, a catastrophe like this. Um, my, my fear was um, double, uh, first uh, for the building, but it was also for the uh, 
consequences of uh, the disaster itself. I felt first that I was at, at Kobe when the um, uh, when the first uh, earthquake happened there. It was my first experience. I I just couldn't. I recommend it highly to go to one of these events after they happen to see how the world could really be different. And um, I had a lot of friends that uh, were working uh, at, uh, at at Kobe in the reconstruction and in the um, on the uh, recovery of uh, of people and uh, values in uh, in the first earthquake and um, learn from direct experience how incredibly this creed, um, I think, um, Japanese culture can be uh, in front of uh, uh, situations like this. And I knew from the beginning that probably the problem was geometrically higher than what it was reported uh, by the press. And I still think that um, um, it is the the, the most uh, well prepared and uh, resilient people to really have to um, um, endure situations like this. I'm looking forward to going to Japan, uh, where I learned so much at the end of the year. Uh, uh, several people, actually, a very large percentage of our office is is um, um, is Japanese nationals. Um, they themselves were incredibly. Uh, I don't know if the term is right, but I mean, shy. You may call it discreet. I mean, uh, resilient to um, to really report on the on the faith of their families and friends and. Uh, and for me, that's that, that's probably the most uh, amazing learning that uh, in front of such a, um, a sort of occurrence, people could actually maintain a certain sense of uh, normalcy and uh, and um, ability to pull together and get back to on their feet. I mean, I think that um, we all owe this to Japan. Certainly, I do. And I think that uh, it is really absolutely fundamental that uh, uh, that we all, you know, contribute financially, if for no other reason than uh, than the fact that uh, it is an exceptional uh, part of uh, human history, of human culture, and a place that uh, uh, that that needs in this moment. Uh, I mean, all of our efforts to recover. So I I can only tell you that uh, for me this is an event that should more than anything else become a fundraising event. Mm -hmm. um, this is not about work, it's not about learning uh, on the technical level. I, am, I had absolutely no doubt that uh, in my experience in, in Japan during the design of the building I saw the most uh, forward-looking and sophisticated level of engineering. Whatever it could have been done, I mean, you know, it was done. And the pictures that were shown at the beginning showing uh, Sendai City a week ago proved that. I think that the important thing is the human uh, toll. And we all should try to put our, our efforts to mitigate it. Okay, thank you. I, I, actually, I, I I don't have a remembrance of when I first learned of the earthquake because it seems to me that it's been a constantly unfolding event. It's not something that you heard about, but rather we hear about this and then we hear more and we hear more and more and and I I, I guess uh, uh, as an engineer I, I don't feel that I really understand uh, very much about the events that took place there. Obviously, the greatest damage was from the tsunami, but we didn't really understand that, I think, when we first heard about the earthquake. That, that all came later. And, and I think the unfolding was very unfortunate.